Okay, we're live. Assalamu alaikum, brothers, sisters, friends, guests. Uh, welcome to this live stream. Uh, we're going to be discussing a very, very interesting topic today uh, regarding what it means to live a life without God. And I'm going to go into this, and we've covered similar topics before, but I think it's going to be very powerful because I'm going to touch upon it from several different aspects today. So we're going to look into, you know, if you practically deny God, deny the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that made us, what does that practically mean for us and our lives, right? And we're going to look at what it means from the perspective of happiness, what it means from the perspective of meaning, what it means from the perspective of purpose, what it means from the perspective of value, uh, what it means from the perspective of ultimate justice and all of these things, right? And the beautiful thing is, is that the way our lives you know, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the way he has made our lives, you know, it's got sort of uh, check, uh, checkpoints, if you like. So if we deny him, if we turn away from him, you know, there's these checkpoints that keep us in sight of what our actual goal is of being here in this life. Because what happens is, as we're going to see today, when you deny God and you turn away from him and you become an atheist or an agnostic, that has implications. That has implications on how we live, what our lives are about. And these are the things I want to discuss with you today. And it's going to be very, very interesting. So whoever's watching this right now, what I want you to do is I want you to share this live stream with all of your friends and all of your, all of your non-Muslim friends on your Facebook page. There should be a little notification button on the bottom of your screen. Make sure you click that right now so you can invite all of your friends. If you're Muslim, please share this because this may be a Dawa opportunity for you. So if you're sharing this live stream and someone benefits from this, you may get the reward for that. So make sure you guys share this too, inshallah. And any non-Muslims that are watching this right now, I welcome you to this live stream. I hope you benefit from this and I really encourage you to stay all the way through because I'm sure you'll find some very, very beneficial things that you're going to come across today and ideas which may enlighten you and, and, and you may get some answers that you've been looking for for a very long time. So like I said, just to reiterate once again, um, that the topic we're going to be covering today is a very practical topic and it's a very real topic to ourselves, our individual lives. And the topic is what does it mean practically? What type of life would we live if we deny God, if we turn away from God as rational human beings, beings that ask questions and want to know answers, right? What does it mean? And the reason I wanna, this came to my mind and I really wanted to share this with you guys this week was because recently we did a course uh, for Muslims where we, we sort of show them how to engage with human humanity, engage with other human beings and sort of deliver the beautiful message of Islam with them. And one of the sections we covered was the practical aspects, the, the practical impl implications of denying the Creator, of denying God, right, in one's life. What does it mean for that person? And we came across some very, very amazing things, had some very amazing insights that I'd like to share with you guys today. So that's what we're going to be covering today. And like I said, brothers, sisters, friends, we're doing this every week. There's myself, there's a few more brothers that come on live here. You know, just to share some ideas with you guys, to get across some thoughts, and to really help you guys out there that are sincerely looking and searching. Those of you that, you know, know that there's more to life. Those of you that know, you know, that there is much more to this life than just, uh, you know, just living, living it the way we do, right? Waking up in the morning, having our breakfast, going to work, coming home, you know, watching some TV and going to sleep and repeating that over and over again. As human beings, there's many of us that have woken up to the reality or awoken to the reality and understanding that there is more to life than just this. There is more to life than just living it in this mediocre way, in the way we have been all of our lives, right? And those that are on that search, on that journey, this is for them, right? We, I'm really reaching out to you people who have been looking for answers, people who already accept and understand that there has to be something out there. There is, there is a greater power, there is a cause, there is a creator who created everything around us, including ourselves, right? Those are the people I'm speaking to. And those people that are on a spiritual journey looking for answers, they want to know why they're here, you know, where they're going, what's it all about, you know, what's the meaning of their life, you know, they want answers. Those are the people I'm addressing today. So without further ado, brothers, sisters, friends, I'm going to go straight into the topic. And as I said, the topic today is a life without God, a life without meaning. So what does this mean? So essentially, we live in a time where many, many people 
are turning away from God. Many, many people are living lives which are void of God. They, don't, they, they have adopted the ideas of atheism, of naturalism, of, you know, have become agnostic, you know, have become people who say that there is nothing beyond the physical. They have become people who sort of, you know, just, just believe that they're here to live once. They have one life, you know, the YOLO mentality, you only live once. And once you've lived your life, you're going to die. This is the mentality they have. Now, many people just go by life believing this. But what they sometimes seem to do is whenever the questions arise like, is that really my purpose? Is that why I'm really here? You know, when they start thinking of these things, many people are very good at just brushing it under the carpet. Getting rid of these thoughts. You know, and just carrying on with this YOLO mentality. You only live once mentality. Just go do what you want, enjoy your life, have fun, and you're going to die. Right? However, there's many other people who can't simply brush it under the carpet and they realize, you know what, there's more to life. I can't just carry on living my life like this. My life just can't be about you know, waking up, fulfilling my physical needs and then going to sleep every single day and repeating that day in, day out till the day I die. They realize that there's more to life than just that. They realize that they, they, they are here for a reason. Right? And what, 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 what strengthens that belief for them is, is the whole, their ability to ask these questions. Right? Their ability to ask, why am I here? What's my purpose? Where am I going? What's this life about? Right? These questions haven't just arisen by chance out of nothing. We, we have these questions for a reason. Right? Uh, we have Brother Slaudin Patel that's joined us, mashallah. So if Brother Slaudin, if you can please share this video with all of your friends and non-Muslims that you may have on your Facebook page, it'd be very beneficial, bro. Um, so yeah, that's the point. So many people ask these questions. They want answers, right? So here we find people end up in a situation where, they, where, they, where some people have denied God, turned away from God, you know, claim to be atheists, claim to hold the position that there is no God and that's how I'm going to live my life. But this belief comes with implications, right? This belief comes with implications, right? Now, before we go into these implications, what does it mean? What does your life mean without God? Before we go into this, anyone watching this right now, what I want you to do is I want you to share this live stream. Also, we have the comment section at the bottom, brothers and sisters and friends. I want you to leave all of your comments below. Any questions you may have, right? Please leave them below. And if I can't address them while I'm on this live stream, straight after the live stream, I will go back and I'll go through each of the questions and I will try to answer them the best I can. So, brothers and sisters, what does it mean, and friends, guests, what does it mean if you claim that God does not exist? If you try to live a life without God, what does it mean? This is a very important question, right? Because most of us don't think about these things. And the reality is, if you deny God, if you say God does not exist, if you claim there is no God, that means several things. A few of the things that means your life becomes void of a couple of things. You, start, you, you lose a few things from your life. And some of the things are, number one, there is no ultimate value to life. There is no ultimate hope. Let's start with hope. right? What is hope? When we hope in something, we have an expectation. We have an expectation in the future that we will have certain things, that certain things will work out. And you know, when things get really rough and bad, we have an expectation, we have a hope in something. However, if you deny God, there is no ultimate hope anymore. There is no hope anymore if we think about it. Because a life without God, what is it? Imagine you're on your deathbed, right? And you don't believe there's a creator. You don't believe there is God. You don't believe there's anything out there. You believe this world is just randomly emerged and you have randomly emerged in this world and you have lived your life and now you're on your deathbed. You're about to die. Where is the ultimate hope there? What hope does this person have? Nothing. It's just an accident. And this accident is about to die. That's what he believes about himself. He loses all hope. There is no hope for him. He can't, he can't put his trust in something because he doesn't believe in anything. Right? So a, a, a someone who denies God and the existence of God, his life becomes a void of hope. There is no hope in his life. He has no hope in his life. Right? Imagine a person who has, who has a fulfilling life. He has all of the money and all of the luxuries and all of the cars and everything in his life. All these physical things. Where is the hope for him? Where is the hope that this will continue? There's no hope. There's no expectations. There's nothing. Right? Imagine on the opposite end, a person who has nothing in his life. He suffered all his life. But he denies God. He believes that all of this is a random accident. 
Where is the hope for him? Where is the hope that his life will change? No hope, right? Think about meaning. Let's think about meaning for a second. Where is the meaning in life without God? <clears throat> and I want you to really follow along with me here. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. But I want you to really follow along with me here. Think about this for a second. Imagine you believe there is no God and you live a life as an atheist. What value? Think about this. Let's talk about value. What value does your life have? Where is the value in your life? Think about it. Really think about this. I mean, let me give you a simple analogy. Imagine for a second that I had a chocolate bunny, a chocolate rabbit. You know, you get those chocolate rabbits on Easter. Imagine I just have a chocolate rabbit right in front of me right now, right? And there's me in this room. And imagine you have, I don't know, you have an axe in your hand and you wanna, you're very angry and you want to you wanna release some of your anger. So you have a choice. You can either take the axe and attack the chocolate bunny or take the axe and attack me. Now I want you to ask yourself the question, what will you attack? What will you go for? Will you, will you go to attack the chocolate bunny or will you attack me? And the answer is, if you're really thinking about this, innately, just from us being human beings, we know that if you're angry, you will just go for the chocolate bunny because it's just a piece of chocolate, right? And you leave me as a human being. But what you've done here now is you've made a distinction between me as a human being and that chocolate bunny, that chocolate, you know, that chocolate rabbit, right? But why? The question is, why do you make the distinction? Because if there is no God, there is no creator, and if that's the case, and everything within the heavens and the earth and in the universe and in this world, all it is is just a rearrangement of physical stuff, just atoms and molecules and just physical things. If that's all there is within the physical universe, then what's the difference between me and that chocolate bunny? What's the difference? That chocolate bunny is a rearrangement of atoms and molecules, and me as a human being, I am also another type of rearrangement of atoms and molecules, right? Where's, where's the difference? Where is the difference? Where is the value? Now someone may argue, some atheists may argue, they say, well, you know what? You're a human being, you're a conscious human being, right? And this chocolate bunny, this sweet, it's just, it's just, a re it's just chocolate, there is no life to it. But the question to ask is now, why, where do you get this value from? Where do you get this idea from that I have more value than the chocolate, this chocolate rabbit? Because on your worldview, on atheism, there's no difference. It's just atoms, and I'm just atoms, and this is a different rearrangement of atoms. There's no value anymore. There's no meaning behind these things anymore, right? So it, it should technically, technically, if you deny God and you claim naturalism and atheism, which is that th this world is just random, it's all physical, it's just physical atoms. Everything within it is physical. I am physical, I'm just atoms, anything else is just physical and atoms. If that's the case, then technically, what that should mean is that whether you destroy the, the chocolate bunny or you destroy me, there should be no difference. There should be no difference, technically speaking. And this is the, the absurdity of denying God. Because if you deny God, you take the value away from everything. Now you may sit there as an atheist and claim, well, no, you're a human being, you're conscious, you know, you have value, you're a more complex rearrangement of atoms. But all of these things mean nothing. If you really think about it, if you really break it down, all of these things mean nothing. Because it's just atoms. And if you claim one thing has another more value than the other thing, this principle is a metaphysical principle. You can't claim that because all you believe is, in it is physical. right? It makes no difference on atheism. right? That's another absurdity. Let's look at a third absurdity. And that is of purpose. Where is the purpose in life? And I want you guys to think about this. I want you to really think about this. If you deny God and you say there is no God, I'm just here to live my life and have fun and just you know, be myself. Where is the purpose? If everything is an accident, according to atheists, it's all an accident, there is no creator, there is no God behind this all. If it's all an accident, then where is the purpose? There's no purpose in life anymore, right? Because think about this, if you wake up one morning and you go down for breakfast, and you have a glass of milk sitting or a, or a jar of milk sitting on the, the counter, on the table, and you knock over, accidentally knock over the milk and it falls over and it spills all over the floor, it's just an accident. There's no purpose behind it, right? It just happened. In the same way, if our lives are just an accident, we're here by chance, there is no creator, there is no cause, we weren't created for a reason, then that's it. There's no purpose. There's just, we're just here, we're gonna die. There's no ultimate purpose. 
Now the atheist again may say, well look, I give myself purpose. My purpose is to be a doctor, my purpose is to be an engineer, my purpose is to do charity work, my purpose is to live a good life. They may say stuff like this, but what they're doing when they say these things is they're making purpose up for themselves. They're deluding themselves, they're lying to themselves. Right? Because no one told them. Who told them that, that, that your, the purpose of your existence is to be good? The purpose of your existence is to be a doctor. They just make this up. They just look at the world around them and the people around them and what the other people are doing in life. And they just copy them blindly. Blindly follow. You know, they, they, this is, they give themselves purpose, but this is not ultimate purpose. This is deluding yourself. This is lying to yourself. This is making things up as you go along just to get, get through life. Right? So what we see is on atheism or on any world view, when you deny God, when you deny God, your life makes no sense. There is no purpose in life anymore. It's all just random and you're here by accident and accidents don't have a purpose. Right? What else? Let's look at it from the perspective of happiness. Now everyone wants to be happy, right? Everyone wants to say, you know, I, I have everyone wants to just, just be happy in life. If you ask anyone why they do something and you keep asking the why question as children do sometimes, you know when they come to you and they say, you know, why are you a doctor? Because I want to help people. Why? Because I like helping people. Why do you like helping people? Well, uh, you know, it makes me happy. Do you see? If you ask the why question, it always, inevitably, almost always will end up because I want to be happy. I want to feel content. I want to feel satisfied. I want to feel happy. This is what will end up. But... The, the, the sad reality is if you deny God, there is no ultimate happiness in life. There is no ultimate happiness. I'll give you guys an analogy. Something you can think about right now as you're watching this to really drive the point home. And I want you to just follow along for a second. If it helps closing your eyes, close your eyes for a few minutes. But imagine for a second that you, as you're watching this live stream right now, suddenly you start to feel really, really sleepy. And as you feel sleepy, your eyes start closing and your eyes shut. And before you know it, you've fallen asleep. And the next thing you remember is you wake up on a plane. And you look around you and you, you, you initially you get worried. Now I want you to really think about how you must be feeling in this situation. What you're going through right now. You've just fallen asleep in your room watching a live stream. And the next thing you remember, you're on a plane. And the plane is flying. It's moving. Right? Now imagine how you feel, you'll be worried, you'll be freaking out, you'll be looking around you thinking, what's going on, how did I get here? Think about all of the questions that will be going through your head right now. Right? But then suddenly, suddenly you start to feel, you know, you're sitting on a very comfortable chair. And you start to feel the comfort of the chair you're sitting on, you start to enjoy the chair you're sitting on. And then you look over to your right and you, you see a window. Obviously planes are windows, you look out of the window and you see the most beautiful sunset you've ever seen in your life. The sun setting, you know, there's a beautiful hue. You can see the colors of the sun at sunset, orangey colors. You can see the most beautiful scenery, right? You see all of these amazing mountains and hills. You see all of these beautiful things. And you start to enjoy the view outside. And then, as you're enjoying the view and as you're enjoying the chair that you're sitting on, suddenly, a person comes with a tray of food. And it's the most beautiful food you've ever seen and ever tasted. And you start to taste the food and you start to eat the food and enjoy the food. And suddenly you realize that you're distracted by all of these amazing things around you. But I want you to ask yourself a question. Although temporarily you may be enjoying the things around you, are you truly happy in that situation? I want you to really ask yourself this question. Can you be truly happy if you don't know how you got on the plane, where this plane is going, who put you on the plane, and where it's going to land. If you don't have the answers to these questions, can you truly be happy? You may be distracted. You may be temporarily satisfied with the food and the view and the chair. But can you truly be happy? And the answer, once again, if you are honest with yourself, the answer is no. You can never be happy in this situation unless you have the answers to those questions. My brothers, sisters, friends, this analogy, this thought experiment that we've just done is the analogy of our lives. This is how our lives are. We don't choose our birth. We just come into this world. And before you know it, we're growing up 
and we're starting to see the world around us and the function of the world around us and we start to just blend in we just start to do what other people are doing around us right we just start to go with the flow we we're distracted by things in this world but we're not truly happy because we don't know who put us here where we came from who made us where we're going after death if we don't have the answers to these questions we can never truly be happy you can never truly be happy and our souls our nature knows this we know this deep inside we know that unless we have the answers to these questions these fundamental questions we can never be happy and this is why we see people struggling you know they, they have this internal struggle they have this difficulty inside them they're looking for answers they want to know why they're here they want to know where they're going they want to know what's death all about what's going to happen after death they're afraid of it they want to know what the purpose of their life is they want to know these answers and there are many people like i said before they, they just brush it away they just brush it under the carpet but there are many people in this world that can't push it away and they want answers they want to know why and in the absence of the answers many people fall into depression many people fall into anxiety many people become suicidal you know many people become agitated and angry and frustrated with life because they don't have the answers to these questions brothers sisters and friends we need the answers to these questions we were created to ask these questions and this is a blessing from god because god put these questions within us so when we ask them when we get agitated like this we will look for the answers we will be naturally inclined we'll be driven to look for the answers and if we're sincere god will guide us he will give us the answers and the answers have come and god has sent these answers throughout history to all of the messengers that came from god all of the messages that came from god came with these answers for people this is the mercy of our creator and i'm going to touch upon this a bit later but for now i want you to really understand this point that if you deny god if you deny the creator if you deny allah who is allah and i'm going to discuss this in a second let's just stay with god for now if you deny the creator of the heavens and the earth your life becomes absurd nothing makes sense there is no ultimate value there is no ultimate meaning there is no true purpose in your life there is no true happiness in your life your life becomes empty your life becomes empty unless and until you turn back to the one that made you and you do what you were designed to do to fulfill your purpose and we're going to discuss what the purpose of our life is until you do this you'll never be happy and you know what's interesting there is a very very powerful verse in the Quran the Quran is the revelation that was sent down to the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the final revelation of God and there's a very powerful verse in the Quran where God says you know something along the effects I'm just giving you a loose translation that those that turn away from the remembrance of God those that turn away from his remembrance they will live a depressed life now the word used ma'isha dhan dhanka and I'll translate this to Arabic the, the the word used encompasses a very deep meaning the meaning of this word when you look at it of the root of the word is that these people that turn away from the remembrance of God they will have a suffocating life they will have a constricted life they will have a depressed a a a a a a, a, a pitiful life a very sad dark life they will have anxiety they'll have depression they'll have this tightness within their chests they will not be happy they will not want to live they will not want to function they may fall into this into the depths of these things they will be restricted right they'll be they'll have a wicked life an evil life and you know some of the some of the scholars of Islam when they commented on this particular verse uh, one of the most famous of the scholars uh, or commentators on this verse Ibn Kathir his name was he said that these people from a worldly materialistic perspective they could have everything right so these people that have turned away from the remembrance of their creator turned away from God from a worldly perspective they can have all of the money all of the luxuries all of the houses and the cars and 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 the gold and the women and the and the the boats and the yachts and all of these things they can have all of these things but however they will have a tight depressed life they will not be happy internally they will be sad inside and isn't this let me ask you isn't this the state we find people in today famous rich people isn't this the state we find them in today they have all of the money and the luxury and the cars and all the materialistic things of this world but are they happy no they're living a very restricted tight depressed life right to the point where many of them commit suicide 
many of them. Even recently, I believe it was one of the lead singers of Linkin Park who committed suicide. Right? Some of them do drug overdose. They take overdose and drugs. They're just not happy. They're drowning themselves with alcohol, drugs, you know, recreational drugs, all of these different types of drugs. They're trying to just, just fade away from reality. They don't want to think about life because they're not happy. And the reason they have these people, they have this tight, restricted life, a depressed life, is because they are not fulfilling their purpose. And this brings us beautifully onto what our purpose for existence is. See, God is very merciful. You know, throughout the Quran, He tells us why He created us. He gives us the answers. He tells, He gives us a plan. You know, like you get diet plans these days. Everyone is on the diet flex. They want to get healthy. They want to lose weight, and you get a plan. God has given us the plan to have a successful, happy, peaceful life. And an integral part of that plan is to know why we were created. God created us. Allah created us. His name is Allah. And I'll give you a bit more of a breakdown as to, as to where we get that from. But God created us to worship Him. It's that simple. Our purpose, our reason for existence is to worship God. He created us to worship Him. Now worship in Islam is something very beautiful. It's very comprehensive. I mentioned this many times before. Worship means submission to God. Giving yourself up to God peacefully. right? Knowing that He wants best for you. Whatever He's advised you to do is best. Realizing He created us to worship Him, right? And what's beautiful about this worship in Islam, this submission to God in Islam, is that it's the type of submission that will free you, right? So in other words, if you want to look at it, we were created as human beings to be free. Free from the slavery of this, of this physical world. Free of making ourselves slaves to money, to houses, to cars, to women. We were, we were created to be free. And to, the only way to truly achieve this freedom is to enslave yourself to God. To have one master, the creator of everything that exists. The one who is not a part of his physical creation, but who created all of his, this physical world, this universe and everything that is in existence. So we were created to be free, free of slavery to these physical things and everything else other than God. So if you want true freedom, if you truly want to be free, you have to enslave yourself to God alone. Worship God alone. Be a slave to God alone. And when you become a slave of God, a submitter to God, you will find true freedom in this life. You're no longer a slave to anything physical. You will truly feel liberated. You will become liberated. And this is what we're all trying to achieve to do. I myself, I'm trying to do the same. It's not easy. Sometimes we fall short. Sometimes we fall off track. Sometimes we make mistakes. But you pick yourself back up knowing the target and you turn back towards God. And you will find you, that you will be happy and you will be peaceful and you will be tranquil. Because you will be fulfilling the purpose of your existence. And I give this analogy many times over. You know, imagine if you buy a car and you know your car is designed to run on petrol. right? Normally cars, when we buy cars, they're designed to run on petrol. That's just the normal fuel consumption. Some are diesel, some are petrol. Now imagine you drive your car for a week and you put the best fuel in it. But a week later you try to become creative and you instead of putting petrol in the tank, you put water in the tank. What's going to happen? the car is going to break down. It's inevitable. If you put water in the tank, the car will break down because the car is not designed to run on water. In the same way, us human beings, God created us and our essence, our souls to run off worshipping God, submitting to God, not worshipping physical things, not running after the world, not running after our desires, right? But to worship God alone. And there's another very beautiful verse in the Qur'an which has just come to mind, which is that God says, whose condition is better? The one who has one master or the one who is a slave to many masters? Whose condition is better? Think about this. Just think about it purely from this perspective. Imagine you're a slave to money, women, cars, houses, uh, the list goes on, right? You're being pulled in this direction and that direction and that direction and every direction. Think about your state. You're going to be frustrated and tired. You're going to burn out. But think about the state of the person who's a slave to one master. And that master being the creator of the heavens and the earth, God. Think about his state. He'll be at peace. He'll be happy. Because the, thing, the reality is God doesn't need us. He doesn't need anything from us. God, in the Quran, we, for example, one of the names God tells us, his name is As-Samad. Right? And now this word is very profound and I had to give you the Arabic. I try to avoid giving too much Arabic because you know it's very difficult for non-Muslims to understand. But it's very important I mention this because 
This word is very comprehensive. This name of God is very, very comprehensive. And an aspect of this name is that He is free. He is perfect. He is independent. He is the one that's complete. He is perfect in every way. He is completely independent. He is free. He is distinct and disjoint. He is not part of His physical creation. And everything in existence, everything in His existence is dependent upon Him. Everything in existence is dependent upon Him. Every, all of us as human beings, all of creation, every atom, every cell is dependent upon Him. He doesn't need anyone. He doesn't need us. He, God does not need us. And we need to really understand this because one of the misconceptions people have is, Oh, why does God need me to worship Him? Is God needy? You know, what, does God need me? Is He dependent upon me? No. God is free of need. He is free of need. But He created us to worship Him. If we don't worship Him, it doesn't take away from God in any way, shape or form. If we worship Him, it doesn't add to God in any way, shape or form. But if we worship Him, we benefit because we were designed to worship Him. But if we turn away from Him, then we lose out and we live though that depressed, sad life, that constricted life because we have turned away from our purpose of our existence. It's very important we understand this, that God is independent, He's free of need. God tells us in another part of the Qur'an, and by the way, let me clarify this point before I go into that. We know God, Allah, God as Allah. He introduces Himself in the Qur'an as Allah. Now Allah, according to most of the scholars, comes from the root Al-Ilah, which means the deity. He is the only deity, the only being worthy of all worship and praise and thanks. He is the only, the creator. He is the creator. There is no other creator. There is no other being that has any power. Right? So we call him Allah from Al-Ilah. Right? And the interesting thing about his name is that it's genderless. There is no male or female. These, these, these type of trivial lower, lower realities don't apply to God. Right? God is, we don't say God is a man or a woman. Yes, we, 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 we address him as he and God tells us to address him as in the royal we because this is our majesty and respect. It's not our gender or anything or, or plurality in any way, shape or form. It's out of respect and, and, and majesty. Okay? Understanding this, Allah, God whose name is Allah, the only true God, the only one worthy of all worship, He tells us in the Qur'an, that every single thing within existence, right now, as I speak to you and as you listen to me, every single thing in existence, every single atom, every single speck, every single wall, every single chair, every single floor, every single roof, every single bird, every single snake, every single tree, every single leaf, every single flower, every single petal on every single flower, you know, every single uh, molecule of water, Every single thing, everything in reality is constantly praising, glorifying God in a way that God knows best. We can't understand the mode of worship of these things. That's beyond us. But God is telling us that every single thing is constantly, every single created thing is constantly glorifying the Creator, glorifying its Creator, glorifying Allah. Right? It's doing what it's designed to do. It's doing what it's designed to do. But us human beings, we have been honored in a way because God has given us the opportunity for ourselves to use our intellects and our rational faculties and our minds and our hearts you know, and our pure nature to turn back to Him and to submit ourselves to Him with understanding. God has given us this honor to do this. right? But when we don't do this, we're the ones that miss out and we lose out and, and, and we fall into depression and sadness and anxiety. And we have lives, we live lives which are void of meaning. We live double lives. We live, we live, we're living schizophrenia, right? We're living a state which is contradictory to each other. We live as if there's purpose to life, if there's meaning to life, if we have value, you know, if we should truly be happy and be chasing our goals in life. But all of these things mean nothing when you deny God. Because you can't account for any of these things. Because without God, what are you? What are we? All we are is just an accident. An accident. Just like spilt milk. You, me, everything, we're just an accident without God. But deep inside, you and me, if we're sincere, deep inside we know this is not the reality, we know this is not the case. Because we know we're more than that. We know we're more than that. We have value, we have meaning, we have purpose. Right? We know this deep inside. But there's a battle that goes on within us. Because sometimes, you know, the evil forces, Satan, he, he, he plays with us. He wants us to fulfill our desires, run after our desires, chase our desires. 
you know, and we get caught up in the loop and the cycle of fulfilling a desire so much that they become more important to us. We can't think in the long run. We can't think beyond that immediate pleasure. We can't think beyond that immediate high, right? And when we come off that high, we were more depressed than we ever were before. And we get stuck in this circle. We get stuck in this circle. But it's important to realize that we're more than this. And to put our desires and our negativities aside and look inside, deep inside to our true, pure nature. What are we? And if we truly, sincerely look inside, we will realize that there is a creator and we were designed to find him. We were designed to search for him, look for him, find him and then worship him. This is a part of our nature. And again, this is the mercy of God. Right? So we need to know this. We need to know this and understand this and wake up to this reality. It doesn't mean when you come to this reality of Islam, and Islam means submission to the will of God. Right? Islam is what all of the prophets bought. Islam is what all of the prophets bought from the beginning. Right? From the beginning, when man first stepped foot on this earth, all of the prophets, God sent all of the messengers, He sent them with this pure submission. Islam means submission to the will of God. They came to call people back to their Creator, to worship Him alone and to do good while they're here on this earth. But some of the corrupt people of their time, they took the message and they distorted it and corrupted it. Until God sent His final messenger with the Qur'an. Now the Qur'an is the final revelation of God. The final testament if you like, however you want to see it. And God Himself said this time round that He will preserve it till the Day of Judgment. He is preserved. God is preserving it and He is taking care of it so we can benefit from it. You and me. We can turn to it and we can pick it up and we can open up the words of God and benefit from it. And these are the literal words of God. We don't have biographies like in Christianity. With all due respect to Christians, we don't have biographies. We don't have biographies according to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. We have the literal words of God. The literal uncreated words of God. We have those. We have those in the Qur'an. That's what the Qur'an is. It's a speech of God. It's a speech of God. I, and I don't know, if we really let that just sink in for a second, I don't know what's more profound than that. Right? We have people, and you know this is the crazy thing. We have people... We have people in this world who are spending millions of pounds setting up uh, laboratories and satellite disks to try pick up signals from outer space, yeah, to see to see if they could pick up signals from other life forms, in, life forms in other parts of the solar system, or not the solar system, sorry, in other parts of the of our galaxy and in in somewhere else in the universe, right? SETI, for example, search for extraterrestrial intelligence. All of these millions of dollars and pounds have been put into this search for other life. Because it's a part of our human nature. This is this desire within us to search for life out there. We don't want to be alone. We don't like being alone as a human race. right? We're looking for life out there. We want to know, is there any other life out there? Is there intelligence out there? Can we communicate with them? We're searching for this. Yet God, the creator of everything that exists, including any other life that may exist out there, He has sent His revelation, His speech down to us. He has sent it down, as He says in the Qur'an. He has sent it down to us and it's preserved. It's there. And it's not difficult to understand and read. It's there amongst us today, yet we turn away from it. We ignore it. We just think of it as any other book. You know, the, the world, there's some people in this world that have created this facade, this, this false veil, this false identity of Muslims and the Qur'an and Islam. Oh, this is evil, this is bad, this is backward, this is wrong. You know, Islam is a barbaric religion. All of these silly things, right? Just to keep people away from this truth. Just to keep people away from fulfilling their purpose and being happy. Muslims don't want money from anyone. We don't want money from you. We don't want anything from anyone, right? We just want for you what we want for ourselves, which is paradise, eternal bliss. A relationship with our Creator. For the ability of God wills one day to see His face, as He says in the Qur'an. This is what we want for humanity. This is what we want for our brothers and sisters. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And you know, they take the Prophet, peace be upon him, and they try to ridicule him and to, to misrepresent him and to distort his image and character. But he was the most beautiful man to walk the face of this earth. The most selfless person. He says, according to one of his traditions, he says, love for your brother what you love for yourself. Right? Think about this. And this brotherhood, this, the scholars that interpreted this, said this, this, is, this brotherhood is brotherhood in humanity. Right? It's, it's human beings in general. So we want 
to discover our purpose and we want that for you we want you to find your purpose we want to have a relationship with our creator we want you to have a relationship with your creator we want eternal paradise we want that for you too this is why we're doing this you know we, we and we hope for the reward from our creator for this but brothers sisters and friends this is my sincere request to you is to really look into this tradition you know just for a second remove all the veils that maybe may have been put over you through the media and through all of these things regarding Islam and our this beautiful tradition, and to lift those wheels and to just pick up the Quran and read it. And if you're sincere, you will you will know it's from God. You will know it's from the Creator because the beautiful thing about the Quran is, is that it's in line with human nature. You know, God created us on a pure nature. It's called the fitra in Arabic. This pure first nature that God created us on. When someone's sincere picks up the Qur'an and he's lying with his nature, he has a good nature, he's in line with his true nature, he picks up the Qur'an, he opens it and reads it, he know he knows it's from God. He doesn't need any more proofs or evidences. He knows it. He knows it. Because it's in line with his nature, it fits like a glove. Right? It fits like a glove. And this is why I really encourage you guys to pick up the Qur'an and read it. And just to conclude, you know, it's very important uh, that I give you a, a bit of a background as to who God is, right, from the Islamic perspective. Because you may be someone who's thinking, you know what, this will make sense. You know, this, this sounds like the truth, it makes sense to me, I want to accept this, but I don't know. Can you tell me some more about God? It's very easy. God, who we call Allah, as I told you before, comes from Al-Ilah, the deity Allah. He created everything, He created us, and He created us to worship Him. He is one. He's uniquely one. He's not two, three, or four. He's not broken into parts, right? As we, as the Christians do, he is uniquely one, and it's a one that you can't break into parts in any way, shape, or form. It's a one without a second or a third or a fourth. There is no other. He is the only one, and he is unique. There is there is no equal. He has no equal. He's all powerful. He is the one in control of everything. All power belongs to him, right? He is the sole sustainer and provider for his, his creation, right? He has no beginning, he has no end, he is eternal. He doesn't give birth and he wasn't born, okay? And he is not a part of his physical creation. He created everything, but he is not a part of his creation. He's, he's above that. He's above his throne in a way that befits his majesty, right? He is not a part of his physical creation. This is our creator. This is God. And he is simply calling you to turn back to him, Worship Him, fulfill your purpose of existence, which is to worship Him, and through this you'll find peace, happiness, tranquility in this life, and you'll find the best in the life to come. This is the message, right? Now, if you're at the point where you've been looking into Islam, and maybe today you've gotten something else additional, and this, you know, it feels like, okay, now's the time. It feels right for me to accept this. Then coming to this way of life, coming to Islam, submission to the will of God, is very simple. All you have to do is acknowledge firstly, right? We have five pillars in our tradition. The first of them is to acknowledge. It's the shahada, it's the declaration, it's the testimony that there is no God, no deity, nothing, nothing worthy of worship except Allah, God alone. The one true God, Allah alone. And that you bear witness and you say this and you bear witness that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final messenger. In the line of many messengers that came. We believe in all the messengers. Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jesus and many others. Right? All of the messengers. And we believe in all the previous books and we believe in the angels of God. Right? Gabriel, for example, who we call Jibra'il, who brings brought down revelation to the prophets. Right? So we believe in these things and we believe in pre predestination and all of these things. But right now, what's the most important thing is that there's five pillars in Islam and the first of those, those is to acknowledge that there is only one deity worthy of worship, that's Allah. And that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final messenger. And to repeat that in the Arabic, if you can, and I will just say, just in case anyone wants to, who may watch this later, may want to do this now. You say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. So go back and watch that again if you have to and you say that the best you can and that's basically saying what you said in the English and as soon as you do this with your heart and with sincerity you come into the fold of Islam, you're a Muslim, you're someone who submits to the will of God and from this point on you have to try to do the best you can to connect with your Creator, right? And He gives us the tools. So one of the main tools that we recommend and we encourage everyone to do first, if there's one thing you're going to focus on, put everything else aside, 
is to connect with your Creator. And that's through establishing what we call Salah. It's called the prayer in English, but the prayer isn't the right word. It's what Muslims do five times a day. So you know the five time daily prayer? Don't just, I'm using the word prayer for now because we don't have a better word to use. But it's that connection we do five times a day. You know, if you go to New Muslim Academy, you can register there, newmuslimacademy.org, I believe. If you go onto that website, or just do a search on Google, search New Muslim Academy, and you will find every, all the basics you need to do know for, to begin your journey in Islam. And, but start praying, start to talk to God, start to connect with God, right? To start to prostrate like Muslims do, like Jesus did, for example, when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he fell on his face and we prayed, uh, as we hear from the, from the parables from the Bible, right? Start to pray to God, start to connect with God, and you will start to you know, feel that peace and tranquility in your life. And then take it from there. Uh, but I'm going to conclude there, brothers and sisters. Hopefully this has been beneficial. Please, if you haven't already, please, please, please share this video with all of your friends list. Not notify all of your friends, uh, you know, and uh, share this video. Anyone watching later on, please do share this as well. And please leave your comments below, and I'll get back to your comments straight after this live stream. So stay on, stay on this page. Uh, I'm going to go through the questions right after I go offline and I'm going to answer all of your questions. Once again, thank you for watching and listening. Make sure to tune in next week. Click the live notification button so whenever we go live, you guys are notified, inshallah. God willing. And until next time, may the peace and blessings of God be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.